Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. In the last two years, we've had a number of studies published looking at different anti-CD20 antibodies in combination with chemotherapy or by themselves in the use in the treatment of patients with CLL. These anti-CD20 antibodies, including rituximab, obinutuzumab, and ofatumumab, really show very good efficacy in controlling the disease. These antibodies have always been combined with chlorambucil, which has sort of been necessary as the, you know, the importance of doing a randomized controlled clinical trial and sort of building on a currently approved therapy. What I really think is important for people to realize is that I do believe that the anti-CD20 antibodies themselves are doing the lion's share of the work. And it's unclear to me whether or not we really use or whether or not we really need the chlorambucil as well. So with the vision towards thinking about keeping our patients' marrows free of chemotherapy and undamaged by an alkylator like chlorambucil, I think that it, it's a good, there's a good rationale for using an anti-CD20 antibody therapy in a CLL patient to control symptoms, to control the disease, and enable them to have long-term survival. The data that has come out using, looking at ofatumumab and obinutuzumab in combination with chlorambucil for untreated CLL really shows that these antibodies are very well tolerated. What in essence we have found is that it really is that the primary toxicity is going to be just infusion reactions. And when you look at the data for the infusion reactions, it's important to appreciate that there certainly is a way to sort of choose patients wisely and sort of identify those patients who are at high risk for having an infusion reaction. And I think what is really so important to look at is that the obinutuzumab studies, which originally had patients receiving 1,000 milligrams on day one, and then was subsequently changed to having 100 milligrams on day one and 900 milligrams on day two, really shows us that you can dramatically improve the tolerability of an anti-CD20 antibody by just using a low dose as the first day to sort of break down the different, or to reduce the lymphocytosis and to get through the cytokine disarray that often ensues when patients receive these therapies. So the risk of having an infusion reaction when the obinutuzumab was administered 1,000 milligrams in day one was upwards of 85%. With the new strategy, the, infusion, the risk of infusion reaction felt, or the incidence, had fallen to about 50%, and the severity of the infusion reactions had dramatically lessened as well so that the majority of the infusion reactions were now grade one and two, and not three and four. So it's certainly possible to use these anti-CD20 antibodies, not necessarily at the prescribed dose as sort of an initial treatment, but to really use maybe even a lower dose just to gradually introduce the antibodies to the patient so they can tolerate the therapy. I think what's a very good demonstrative example of our ability to lessen the risk of these infusion reactions is shown by the pivotal study for idelisib, which looked at idelisib plus rituximab compared with placebo plus rituximab. In this study, there was actually a marked reduction in the risk of infusion reactions in those patients who received idelisib just as little as two hours before they actually received their rituximab. And in essence, the idelisib shut down the cell machinery that led to the cytokines that subsequently resulted in the infusion reactions. And so it really suggests that even if we're going to use combination therapies, that it really makes the delivery of the anti-CD20 antibodies that much easier.